the Seth Jones trade just keeps on giving. Uh, we've talked about Carl Sillinger. We've talked about David Juracek. We've talked about Adam Boquist. Uh, we're going to talk about him more later on. But uh, today we're talking about Jake Bean, who is kind of the extra in that trade. That is uh, no disrespect to Jake Bean, but we'll get into that in the episode. Uh, so that's what's going on on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. And uh, you can find us at uh, every podcasting app of choice every podcatcher every website that does podcast uh, you can find us over on youtube free and available at all of those places you're never going to have to get behind a uh, paywall for a lockdown product and that is uh, my promise to you uh, and i am your host i am jay foster and uh, let's talk about jake bean because that's the plan for today's episode and i love when i get to talk about the things that i have planned to talk about so uh a little bit of background on Jake Bean for those who can't quite remember where he came from. You know, it's been a long season. Um, Jake Bean came to us from the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, he was kind of an extended part of the Seth Jones trade. So the Seth Jones trade was they swapped first round picks, uh, which is where the Blue Jackets got Cole Sillinger. Um, they got out of Boquist. They got the, the sixth overall pick this year, which turned into David Juracek. And they also got a second round pick in last year's draft, which they sent to Carolina in exchange for Jake Bean, former first round pick, uh, was drafted 13th overall in 2016, uh, still only 24, um, and was a player that didn't really get a chance in Carolina, I don't think. Um, played in the WHL for two seasons after his draft, went to uh, Carolina uh, played with the Charlotte Checkers for basically all of the next two seasons. He got two NHL games in 2018-19. Uh, in 2020-21, he got 42 NHL games with Carolina, but had 12 points. I think he had really, really limited ice time, honestly. Um, so that doesn't necessarily worry me. Uh, but the Blue Jackets were clearly really high on him, and uh, I like him a lot. As well, uh, he had 25 points in 67 games, uh, suffered from injury, like I think basically everyone on the Blue Jackets this season, apart from like two guys, uh, one of whom was Andrew Peake. Um, Andrew Peake actually was the only defenseman to play all 82 games. So, you know, a lot of injuries on the blue on the, the blue line for the Blue Jackets this season. Uh, Jake Bean, unfortunately, one of them missed about 15 games, uh, I think in two separate injuries, which is not um ideal but for a guy that moved up and down the lineup for a guy that um i think a lot of people had not necessarily written off but a lot of people were like man this guy shouldn't have been drafted in the first round um i'm pretty happy with how jake Bean's season went i would have liked a little more consistency from him uh, we'll talk about that in a minute but when he did get to play long stretches of time with the same partner. He spent some time with um, Gavrikov and he spent some time with uh, Wrensky and uh, both of those times. I liked him a lot. Uh, he, I think, has huge potential um, and I think he gets overlooked because he's probably the least flashy or exciting you know if you're watching this on uh if you're listening to this on audio you can't see the the air quotes i put there but um he's not the excitement of 18 year old Cole Sillinger. he's not the excitement of Adaboquist who just does what he wants and goes for wonders all over the place he's not the excitement of david yurichek who again could be in the nhl next season as an 18 19 year old but what Jake Bean is, is a very solid all-around guy. Uh, excellent, excellent skater. Uh, I think maybe one of the best skaters on the blue line for the Blue Jackets at the minute. Uh, can be offensively talented. Had 18 assists 
uh, seven goals, but also plays a pretty all-round game. Uh, he's very good in his own zone, I think. He makes mistakes. He's young, but I'm really excited to see what Jake Bean does next season because I think that's going to be kind of his defining moment in his future with the with the Blue Jackets. Um, he needs a new contract next season as well, I think. And, you know, guys on contract years generally do pretty okay. So uh, in a minute, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what I would like to see from Jake Bean next season, uh, what I would like to see him achieve, and uh, what his next contract is going to be, because I think it could be an interesting one. But first, I've got to tell you about Bet Online. Because betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. You can find your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, uh, the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, uh, combat sports like UFC. That was on last night, and there was a big upset there. So uh, I should put some money on that, and uh, you should have too. Uh, they have esports. They have even things like golf. Uh, Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information, from live in-game betting scores and podcasts. Uh, they've got you covered for all of that. So, if you head to BetOnline.net today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action, uh, you can find that happening today, because Bet Online is where the game starts. And where the second section is going to start is with Jake Bean's contract, because uh, I was incorrect. He has two years left on his current contract at $2.3 million. Then he will be an RFA. So, uh... But my point, I think, still stands. I think this is going to be a really defining season for him, his, you know, quote-unquote sophomore season with the, uh, with the Blue Jackets, I guess, uh, despite the fact that it's his fourth or fifth season. In the league, I'm looking for consistency with Bean. It's what I'm looking for from most of the younger players, honestly. Um, but I think I want to see him play with basically the same player all season. Um, and I think that will give huge, huge dividends for him as a player and the team in general. I'm a big fan of if you have a line that works, stick with it, don't shuffle it around because it doesn't work for two shifts at a time. Um, and I think Brad Larson was kind of guilty of that towards the end of the season, um, not in a John Tortorella way, but in a, you know, okay, we're, we've lost two games in a row. We need to figure something out. And uh, just shuffling until something sticks. And I don't always disagree with that, but I think in terms of the young core for the Blue Jackets, like you have what you have. And I think especially towards the end of the season, you're not making the playoffs. Find out what you have. Stick guys together. Stick, and I know it was difficult because a bunch of them were injured, but stick Jake Bean with one older guy, you know, whether it's whether that is Gavrikov, whether that is a guy like Zach Wierenski, or whether Jake Bean exists down on the third pairing um, with, you know, the rotating cast of guys that they had down there this season. But I think consistency is what I wanted to see, especially for guys like Bean and Boquist, who are still quite young, um, and they didn't necessarily get that this season. So that's what I'm hoping that they'll get next season. Jake Bean especially. I think Boquist, through his skill set, I think can make consistency. Um, I think put him... And again, we'll talk about Boquist in Friday's episode because he's next up on my list, I think. Um, but because he has that kind of that extra offensive flair, I think put him on the power play and he'll be fine. Jake Bean is probably not going to get a ton of power play time um, just because I think he's maybe third or fourth in uh, terms of offensive, defensive ta talent on this team. Um, you know, maybe if they decide to mix things up, he could get some second unit power play time. But as it stands right now, I think you want Wierenski on your first unit, Boquist on your second, and then, you know, you can chop and change as needed. But I don't think Jake Bean is going to get that power play boost. So he has to get it from somewhere else. And I think that's what I think that, that that's what he needs to do. And I think that's what Brad Larson needs to allow him to do is give him a partner. And we talked about this a little bit in Wierenski's episode on Monday is put Jake Bean and Zach Wierenski together. Just stick them, stick them to each other uh, and be like, right, this is our top pairing for the first 15, 20 games. 
if it doesn't like if it's not working mix it up but i think and i think you, you can get that kind of consistency or you need that kind of consistency for a guy like Wierenski as well who did very well last season but this was kind of his first season playing with a mix of different guys since since he turned pro honestly uh he joined the blue jackets immediately got stapled to seth jones and i think you should do the same thing with jake bean and morinsky i think just stick them together and see how it goes and i think that's gonna give the team their best chance to succeed honestly um i don't see i mean you can make an argument for a couple of other guys, I think there's an argument out there to have David Yerchek on that top pairing. But honestly, for my money, I think that's where Jake Bean needs to be. I think he could put Adam Boquist on the second uh, unit or the second line, uh, limit his minutes, let him do his rover thing. I think Jake Bean feels like the closest thing this current team has to Seth Jones. Um, and we're going to talk about that. A little bit more in just a minute, and uh, why I think that Jake Bean can be a top pairing defenseman in this in this league. So that's coming up in a minute on Lockdown Blue Jackets. So I don't know if that was a hot take at the end of last segment where I said that Jake Bean is the new Seth Jones, but he has a lot of similarities in his game. Um, I think they're both very good skaters they are both uh strong positional players um they're both very good at uh transition you want them both on the ice as much as possible and i generally lean towards limiting players ice time i don't think any defenseman should be playing 27 28 minutes i just i don't i think it's it shows a lack of faith in your lower guys in which case get better lower tier guys but that's 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 another discussion for another day. Um, I think Zach Wierenski could really benefit from having a guy like Jake Bean uh, because it would allow him to keep kind of pushing that developmental defensive role that he's kind of been working on this season, but it will also give him a little bit more freedom to be offensively minded. I think if you put him with a guy like Boquist, he's going to have to sacrifice some of that offense to play more defense and give Boquist the lion's share of the offense because, you know, what, and, you know, Micah McCurdy, an, an effective math, likes to say, you know, you can only shoot one puck at any one time. You can only score one goal at any one time. You know, you don't want both guys shooting the puck. Um, and that's, you know, a, why I think Atkinson and Line didn't work a couple of seasons ago because they both wanted the puck all the time. But again, that's that's beside the point. The the thing about Bean, Jake Bean, is he will basically fill in the gaps between Wierenski, if that makes sense. Um, I think they're both very similar players. I think Wierenski has the edge in the offense. I think Bean probably has the edge in the defense. But I think that's kind of a a really solid base for a really good kind of um, symbiotic or codependent defense pairing. And I think that's why Jones and Wierenski really shone for those first few years that they were together. Um, Because anytime one of them did the offense thing, the other one quite happily fell back into the defense and vice versa. Um, And I think you can kind of get the same results for much cheaper uh, because Jake Bean is not making $9 million a year or $9.5 million, or however much Seth Jones is making. Um, and I think what you can do with Jake Bean is use him almost... I don't know that he's going to be a permanent top pairing guy. I think you could use him as a stepping stone. Honestly, of all of the guys at the minute, he's a guy that I think the Blue Jackets could potentially see themselves moving on from. Maybe not at the end of this contract, maybe at the end of next contract, but with the guys coming up like... You're a check, like Matej Chuck, um, like Blankenberg. If Blankenberg takes off, you know, we haven't even talked about him as a potential top pairing guy, but I think, you know, I wouldn't necessarily hate that at the end of the day. All of these guys, I think, have are going to make being a little redundant, but that's a, a big, big future problem. And I think right now, Jake Bean can kind of not necessarily keep that spot next to Wierenski warm for the next guy, but he feels like a very good kind of transitional guy. Um, Boquist feels like a guy that you keep around. 
Um, Gavrikov is a guy that you keep around. He's our only real defensive guy. Um, and he also plays on the left side, which the Blue Jackets are a little bit weaker on. So when you have to, you know, make space for the Yerichaks and the Matejchaks, like logically speaking, it's the guys like Jake Bean that are going to get pushed out. And I don't think that's a bad thing. But while he's here, I think the Blue Jackets can and the Blue Jackets should utilize him on that first pairing and uh, give... Wrensky room to stretch, give Boquist room to do his ridiculous scoring where he just kind of suddenly appears at the bottom of the hash marks and puts the puck in the air, and you're like, wait a minute, that was a defenseman? It was a defenseman. Um, Jake Bean is, uh, I've been talking about this all offseason, a supporting character player. You know, Wrensky, I think, is a main character player. Um, Adam Boquist is a main character player. David Yerichek is a main character player. Players like Jake Bean, players like Vladislav Gavrikov are supporting characters. And that's not a bad thing. Some guys just are supporting characters. And uh, I think this is the perfect spot to put Jake Bean in. And hey, maybe you find out that you actually have a star guy in Jake Bean. And you end up moving someone else because Jake Bean turns out to be a, a phenomenal young defenseman. I think, you know, it's the weird thing at the minute is that the Blue Jackets defensive pool is so young that it's hard to have those transitional guys. Um, you know, like last season, the oldest defenseman was, or the oldest regular defenseman was uh, Vladislav Gavrikov, who's 26. Um, there is one player above the age of 30, and that's Erica Branson on the blue line at the minute. Uh, defensive ages, uh, 25, 30, 26, 22, 24, 24, 24, 28 for Gavin Beru, who I assume is not going to be on the team. Uh, and then, you know, you've got your Eurochex, your other minor guys who you know jake christensen is 22 yurichek's 18 uh Svozol is 19 Knazko is 20 they don't have a lot of those guys that are transitional guys and that's both a good thing and a bad thing because it means that you can kind of just see what sticks and uh, logically speaking of the I don't know, eight or nine guys that i just reeled off six of those are nhl caliber defenseman ideally seven or eight uh but you can kind of have fun and you can play with what's happening and if jake bean turns into a legit top pairing guy that comes at a very reasonable price you know i think you can get away with paying jake bean you know less than four or five million for at least the next couple of years unless he you know has a blowout monster season in the next two years which again is not a possibility i think jake bean could be a very good and very reasonably priced uh, Seth Jones replacement until your Yurichek's, your Batechuk's, etc. are ready. Um, I'm going to give Bean a B for the season. That feels right. Um, I could, uh, you know, like I could arguably give him an A. I think he did the best he could with what he had, um, but I would have liked to see him take maybe a little bit more of a step forward. Um, I fully expect him to do that this season. Like, I think he's going to have a good season. Um, and this time next year, I fully expect to be giving him an A or maybe even an A+. plus. Why not? Let's go wild. But for right now, Jake Bean gets a B. And uh, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, tomorrow, we will not have an episode because it's Thursday. Friday, we will be continuing on with this, and we're going to be talking about uh, Adam Boquist, another very, very young defenseman. So uh, excited to kind of dive into his season, his development, and uh, talk a little bit about that. I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at uh, underscore Jacob Foster, J A K O B F O R S T E R. You can find this podcast at L O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, uh, you can email me at lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. Thank you once again for making this your first listen of the day every day. Locked on Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and also over on YouTube. So uh, if you haven't subscribed on YouTube yet, I'm super close to 200 subscribers over there. So if you want to go and hit that button, I super appreciate it. But uh, until Friday, make sure you stay locked on.